Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Lewis and in today's video, I'm going to address autoimmune conditions. Now, we cannot talk about autoimmune conditions if we don't understand the nature of our immune system. How does the immune system work? That is the starting point. Now, our immune system, first of all, has to recognize self against invading. By self, I mean your own body cells. So before it starts protecting you, it has to identify that this is the body cells. And then anything that is not a self, it starts killing and destroying it like cancer cells, like microbes. So that is how it works. However, in autoimmune conditions, what is happening is your own immune system has a fault. There's a fault in your immune system and therefore it starts uh, targeting your own cells because it fails to recognize self. So it doesn't identify self and therefore it starts targeting it. So you realize that cells from the skin, are start, uh, the immune system starts attacking cells from your skin, also cells in the pancreas and all over even the joints. So some of the immune conditions that uh, occur in our systems are so many, there are so many immune conditions, but I just mentioned a few, is like alopecia. And this is one, uh, one condition that people don't realize is an autoimmune. When the immune system starts targeting hair follicles and hair cells, then that uh, goes to alopecia, you start losing that hair. Another one is in the liver and the muscle. So in the liver you get hepatitis, in the muscle you get a condition called myasthenia gravis. And in the thyroid you get Hashimoto's disease. Uh, in, the, in the joints you get arthritis and also in the connective tissue there's a condition that we, most of us know is called uh, lupus. Then the, of, more, of, of importance here is in the pancreas where we get diabetes and specifically type 1. So type 1 diabetes is automatically uh, uh, the, the immune, immune cells or the pancreatic white blood cells starting to target the beta cells that produce insulin. And therefore, once it kills the pancreas or those beta cells, then you cannot produce uh, enough insulin or start having default in production of insulin. That means your blood sugar levels will be unregulated. So we'll talk about uh, that as we head on in this video. So all these autoimmune conditions, the problem is not, uh, that, that does not, the problem in treatment lies in uh, where we start using uh, drugs to treat uh, these autoimmune conditions. Remember, we have a default in your immune system. And this default is basically hailing from uh, the adrenals, those glands that are on top of your kidneys. Why am I saying that? It's because during autoimmune conditions, what we do is we give drugs that are steroid in nature. Examples are dexamethasone, prednisolone, or even hydrocortisone. So once we give these uh, steroid drugs, what we are doing is we are trying to uh, prevent or slow down the overreaction or the hyperactivity of the immune system. Okay, so we're trying to slow that process down. And that's why we're giving you steroids. And remember, intrinsically, internally, you produce these adrenal hormones from the adrenal glands. These are steroid hormones from the adrenal glands, which are on top of the kidneys. So we are supplementing you external uh, uh, steroids because you have a fault in your adrenal glands already. So from that, we can easily know how to handle this. Because if we give you the supplementation, then what we are doing is we are trying to handle the aftermath but we are not handling the cause. So my intention is to open up your eyes so that you realize that we need to handle the cause more than handling the aftermath, okay? So if we handle the fault, then the aftermath will disappear. Those symptoms will disappear and you start recovering from autoimmune conditions. So the fault is in the adrenal glands. So what do we do to rejuvenate our adrenal glands? Basically, the cause of issues or uh, in the adrenal gland or the failure or this dysfunction of the adrenal glands is caused by two things. Number one is sugar directly, consumption of carbohydrates. That will affect the adrenal uh, uh, glands. That will also kill your kidneys because remember sugar is the number one kidney killer. So once you consume those carbohydrates in plenty, then definitely you end up in adrenal failure or ad adrenal insufficiency. And therefore you'll need these steroid drugs. However, if you stop taking sugar, then you start uh, recovering from these conditions. Number two is stress. Stress now works indirectly because sugar is a direct one, but stress is indirect. How? Stress, when you have high amounts of stress, then you'll produce a hormone from the adrenals again that is called cortisol. And this cortisol hormone, what it does is it tells the liver that, remember, it's part of the counter-regulatory hormones that are produced in the morning to help you get glucose in the system so that you can function during uh, the early morning so that you don't eat. So what it does, 
Cortisol uh, tells the liver to start breaking down the glycogen that is stored in the liver through glycolysis or through glycogenolysis to give you glucose. Also, to start breaking any other source apart from carbohydrates or the glycogen to give you glucose. That means there will be an increase in blood glucose levels. Now, once you have an increase in blood glucose levels, what happens is that is the sugar we are talking about. So that's an indirect channel. Again, that sugar will cause an increase or a rise in blood insulin levels. And remember, insulin is also a killer of the kidney. In our previous videos, we talked about how kidneys are, uh, the effects of insulin, high insulin levels in your system. So those spikes will start also affecting your kidneys and therefore you start retaining water. That's the reason why those people who use these uh, drugs, they have that water retention and they have that moon phase, okay, the round and moon phase because of water retention and that edema. So that comes as a result of uh, an increase in insulin as also as a result of uh, an increase in cortisol and the liver trying to give you sugar uh, because of a reaction to the cortisol. So that is basically how you're supposed to uh, understand this. So now, how do you rejuvenate your adrenals? Because once you rejuvenate your adrenals and then everything goes back to normal and therefore you'll not need these drugs. Because also remember, these drugs have several side effects. And if you've not watched a video that I put up about side effects of steroidal drugs, then be, uh, find, find it and uh, just take a look. We'll put a, a link down below. So, we want to rejuvenate the adrenals so that we start recovering from autoimmune conditions. And how do we do that? The best way to rejuvenate your adrenals and your kidneys and even your system entirely is through fasting. So, prolonged fasting will help you get your adrenals back and get your system back into normal. Also, uh, natural remedies like the sun and sleep, this stabilize your hormones in the system and you will get uh, to recover. Also, never forget healthy keto and exercise. Okay, so those are the mechanisms under which naturally you can rejuvenate. I understand most of you will just take these drugs, but your, dr your diet is still the same. Your lifestyle is, there, is still the same. And that's the reason why you, you are even advised to take this for almost a lifetime. Like for people who, are, who have arthritis, you will get those injections in those joints for a lifetime. And once that depot injection starts to uh, wave around or starts to uh, disappear in the system, then the pain comes back and you have to go back for another shot. So basically, we are just playing around with the immune system, trying to uh, slow down its uh, function or its uh, hyperreaction. But that is not treating the cause. So the cause is in those... Uh, uh, solutions that I've just mentioned. Now, of importance in this video, we want to talk about type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, of reason we have realized so many children, 9-year-olds up to 20-year-olds, are coming up uh, with so many cases of type 1 diabetes, and it's very uh, disturbing. And type 1 diabetes can easily be controlled, specifically in children who totally have cells that are rapid, rapidly multiplying because of growth and development. So it is easier to help a child recover from type 1 diabetes than an adult, okay, because of that. Now, what happens in type 1 diabetes is your own pancreatic immune cells are targeting the beta cells of the pancreas. Remember, in the pancreas, you have beta cells, and these are the cells that produce insulin. And the reason why they are producing that insulin is because you're, you're, you're consuming too much carbohydrates, and therefore your blood sugar levels are rising all the time. Proteins can also cause an, a rise in insulin, however, very minimal. But carbohydrates, the only foods that do not cause a rise in insulin by any means are fat, animal fat for that matter. But proteins, very minimal. Carbohydrates, high spikes of insulin. That is what we want to avoid. So if you keep on consuming carbohydrates, then your pancreas has to produce insulin to help you lower your raising blood sugar levels. Now, this is where the problem begins because now you have an autoimmune, you have your own immune cells targeting beta cells that produce that insulin. And therefore, if you consume carbohydrates, then the insulin that is needed to lower your blood sugar levels is not there. That means you will have uh, high sugar levels and this can lead you to problems, kidney failure, uh, liver failure, the brain damage, and all these conditions that come as a result of high blood sugar levels. So if you handle the cause, which is in diet, your child will start to recover. So if you have, the, the problem is, we give an external insulin to these people. Now, the external insulin is supposed to mimic the intrinsic insulin. So we are just supplementing, we're just giving you an alternative to the intrinsic insulin. However, it works in the same way. But remember this, we have not fixed the diet. So we are still giving you insulin to just help you consume those carbohydrates. Understand that point. The reason why we are giving you insulin is because we want you to have a leeway to keep eating those carbohydrates because we have a solution for you. 
So if you continue eating those carbohydrates, we'll continue injecting you that insulin. Now, look at it this way. Insulin has no problem. We are giving you external insulin, and I'm not advocating against insulin because it helps some people. Now, you're giving external insulin because we don't produce insulin internally. We are not addressing the, the cause. We are addressing the aftermath. Number two, this insulin has side effects. And side effect number one is it will send, it will, you will add weight. Why? Because if you're consuming carbohydrates and you're expecting to maybe recover because you're using insulin, that is not going to happen. All these carbohydrates that you're consuming, once they are absorbed, you're given a shot for insulin to lower that uh, blood sugar level. And where does that sugar go to? That sugar is pumped into fat cells because the work of insulin is like a, a key. It opens up the gates of the cells so that those gates open up and the sugar from the blood uh, moves into the cells. So there comes a time when these cells are too full and they don't want that sugar again. That is where we get insulin resistance. So you can imagine if you're giving an external insulin and then internally you have insulin resistance, it will be a problem. So you'll always keep adding that weight because now this carbohydrate, this glucose that is in blood is being pumped into the cells because of the insulin that you're being injected. So that is a problem. So you'll never lose that weight. Again, we have an autoimmune that affects the pancreas. So what we want to do is we want to slow down the process of that autoimmune uh, reaction so that your pancreas start to rejuvenate and then they catch up. This can happen in children. So children, when you identify this earlier, then you don't need higher doses of insulin because insulin will lead you to hypoglycemia and that is a problem. So what we want is we want to lower the amount of insulin uh, dose and then fix the diet. Once we fix the diet, then that means Basically, let's say you're eating healthy keto, you're eating animal fat and protein and maybe vegetables. That means you will not, the, the amount of insulin that you require in your system is low. So the amount of insulin that you require from that injection is even lower. And that is how we start uh, this management. So in your system, since you have all this uh, failing pancreas, you want to slow down this process of uh, autoimmune so that your pancreas starts to rejuvenate. Because children have a highly and rapidly multiplying cells and organ growth, the pancreas can rejuvenate. So if you keep giving them the external insulin on higher doses, that means that their pancreas will start shutting down. And we don't want that. Now that will mean they will be using this insulin for a lifetime. So they are not losing weight and then their pancreas start to shut down. And remember the pancreas does not only have one role, it has several roles. So if you shut down the pancreas totally, then you're affecting this child's uh, immune uh, development generally. Then again, we are not treating the cause, we are treating the aftermath or the symptoms of uh, uh, your consumption of carbohydrates. So this management of type 1 diabetes totally lies in dietary modifications. So it's unfortunate that children cannot take one meal a day, but if they could, that would be very important for them. So if you lower the amount of insulin, you lower the side effects, your pancreas starts to rejuvenate and then it catches up. Then these children, we can now, once we, we, we reach a point that uh, we have controlled the glycemic uh, levels or conditions, then we can start tapering down the insulin dose and then get it off and continue with the diets. This works totally. And now, if you already have type 1 diabetes and you're an adult, what do you do? Focus. Stay away from sugar in all forms because sugar in all forms or carbohydrates in all forms because carbohydrates are the one that will cause a spike in insulin and that will lead you to uh, demand an external insulin injection. So if you stay away from sugar, then you're safe or carbohydrates generally. So when I talk about sugar, I'm talking about carbohydrates consumption. So if you block carbohydrates consumption, you start to rejuvenate. Number two, one meal a day. This one meal a day, basically make it keto, okay? Make it healthy keto because healthy keto will help you lower your insulin levels and insulin requirements. Number three, exercise. So exercise, the sun and sleep, these go hand in hand. This is part of the entire thing that we've been talking about, the entire healthy living. Healthy keto, exercise, the sun and sleep. Then always prioritize diet over an increase in dose of insulin. Most doctors prioritize an increase in insulin dose. When you get this, these patients coming in with that, uh, maybe a diabetic foot, what we do, we increase the dose of insulin. That is not helping because we are adding more problems. They'll keep on adding weight. will start uh, affecting their kidneys because insulin affects kidneys. So we start having all these problems in uh, uncontrolled blood pressure. We'll also add another drug. So we are doing injustice to these patients. So prioritize diets in diabetes, whether type 1 or type 2. This is also supposed to apply to children apart from OMAD. 
So children should eat eggs, should eat meat, should eat all these keto diets and vegetables and avoid sugar and all meats. Don't give your children ice cream. Don't give your children pizza and all those GMO foods. Do not give your children wheat products. Do not give your children confectionaries and soda and fruits. Don't. If your child has type 1 diabetes, avoid those foods by all means. Give your children whole foods. Give your children healthy keto. And we've talked about keto. So you can find that video about keto and just understand the basics of keto. We'll still talk about it. Then prioritize sleep and the sun. Let the children walk in midday sunlight and let your children sleep and rest. So these are basically what you should do uh, to help you recover from type 1 diabetes, which is a part of the autoimmune conditions.